Recently on storagereview.com, we published a uh, detailed look at the Dell EMC cloud tiering appliance, which we lovingly call CTA. It works with Dell EMC Unity XT uh, storage arrays to connect to the cloud for block storage. Uh, there, there's the option to archive snapshots and for file storage, there's uh, some really neat uh, uh, scaling in, into the cloud that uh, really extends the capabilities of what the Unity XT arrays can do. Uh, with me today, I've got Joshua Fidel, who worked with us on this particular project, and Kenneth Aviles from Dell EMC, who's going to drive us through uh, a, a walkthrough of the CTA. So Josh, thanks for joining. I know one of the things that you were excited about is interface, right? So in, in the uh, version 12 of the CTA, it was a little bit older, and now they've modernized the interface on, on this current uh, appliance. What, what stands out to you from a usability standpoint? Uh, from a usability standpoint, I, I truly like that Dell EMC has updated the interface to be HTML5. Um, I don't think any of us are a fan of Flash, so I'm glad <laughs> to see that gone. And uh, I, I really, the, the interface itself is, is Dell EMC, they're, they're doing a really good job unifying their interfaces, giving them the same look, giving them the same feel. Uh, their their UI team is is really pulling it all together, and I think that uh, you know for for users of Dell EMC hardware in Dell EMC environments, uh, having that unified look and feel really does help increase productivity. Yeah, well, it makes it consistent, right? Which is part of the uh, the the big appeal. All right, so Kenneth, why don't you go ahead and log us in and and let's start walking through what this would look like. And uh, just as a side note, we're starting out here as the OVA has been installed. Incidentally, I should have probably set it up top. There's no additional cost for the CTA. So if you're a Dell EMC Unity XT customer, uh, you get this uh, this license. Uh, the only real cost is your, your cloud. So if this is compatible with ECS, IBM Cloud Object, uh, Azure and S uh, Amazon S3. So there was obviously cloud cost to move data uh, to and fro the cloud, but the appliance itself uh, is is not and can be installed uh, as a single virtual appliance or you also have a uh, ability to do um, uh, some clustered uh, work there too. Yeah, there, there uh, is an HA environment you can set up with the CTA uh, you just deploy multiple instances of the OVA as virtual machines into your vSphere environment. And uh, it actually is very easy to set up. Um, we only did, uh, for this, for our purposes, we only did a single OVA. Uh, it, it literally took us less than five minutes to deploy the OVA, uh, run through a quick, you know, CLI menu, one, two, three, four, et cetera, and get things up and running till we were at login. So it's very yep. easy to deploy, and uh, you can do an HA setup with it too. All right, so Kenneth, we're looking at the main screen here, the dashboard. It's got a little information because this is used already, although you've only tiered 302 of, uh, is it half a billion files? Is that Am I counting the common? common Essentially, word? yeah. 500 million files can be tiered from just one system, from okay. one VM. Let's take a look at how to deploy this. So we've got the OVA, we've got the, uh, we're connected. Are we connected yet? I guess we are to the XT. Uh, so let's walk through uh, what that looks like. Yeah, so I think um, I've, we have gone ahead and, and added the Unity already to the system. So from within the configuration, if we go in and, and select the server, um, we can kind of add both our um, primary system, our Unity, system as well one of the supported um, clouds. So that includes AWS, so I have added it already. It includes ECS, so I have a couple local ECSs, um, and as well um, the Unity system. So once you do add it, provide the required configuration. For example, we can go in here and verify that we can access the Unity from within the um, CTA. So once you make sure um, that you have done that, we can just go ahead and, and schedule some jobs to move that data to the cloud. Great, let's take a look at that. 
So from the schedule page, um, you can see that we have archived some data already. Um, so for the archive job, which is archiving your file data to the cloud, we have uh, 300 something that like we mentioned previously, um, but it's a quickly, you can just add. Um, you can see that it, there's multiple tasks that, that can be run, either um, to move that data to the cloud, migrate from legacy systems, or for example, you could potentially move, um, you, you have S3 at the moment, your business case changed, and you need to change to another cloud. From within CTA, you can do that. As well, you can move your block data. So I'll quickly show you so how to move that block data to the cloud. Now, now this new this schedule wizard here, this is new, right? This is a, a redesigned thing for this release of CTA, correct? If, yes, so it's, it's sim, same, same content, it's just a little bit more friendly. Um, so it's, it's wizard based. <laughs> Friendly is always better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we like simple. Um, so that's the goal of this whole HTML5 is just to guide the user in every step. Um, so that being, um, for example, uh, here I will pick the Unity block option, um, and you might see um, that the system would would automatically go in, and for example, here I have added a Unity. I remove the Unity. The CTA is not able to go in and review view that, um, okay. so it lets you know. But if I do click one that um, I have access, um, the CTA can automatically go in and get all that um, info from the Unity, um, leveraging the Assistant REST API that Unity has. So it's querying that Unity, pulling up the LUNs, and, and knows what it needs to do at that point. Correct. So. So before I proceed, obviously this is mainly for your snapshot data. So for the LUN, you either have to have previously created a manual snapshot or if you have a schedule, for example. So I'll just go ahead and pick this one, for example. Click next. Um, and it will show you the list of different snapshots that we have in the system. So you can see that there's one that was created by the system um, there's one that I've called demo. Um, so the the criteria is user configurable. So the user selects what attribute for that snapshot is going to be used in order to archive that data. Um, so you can see here that I have a couple snapshot, a couple policies. Sorry. Um, so you can archive snaps. I have named them archive snap with compression. If you want to leverage compression, you can when you're archiving to clouds. Um, I'll go ahead and create, we have previously created one to archive data to S3. So if you're like, but what is this going to do? We can always edit the policy to review it. Um, and then in the rules, we can see that we have selected to archive anything, um, any snapshots that are scheduled. So there are multiple rules, so if we are like, Nah, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, you can just go in, add a new um, rule. So it will be based on the attributes of that snapshot. So for Josh, example. You're, yeah, Josh, you're a pretty big fan of the policy engine, I think, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I did like the, the policy engine. I did uh, just want to point out one thing. Actually, if you would hit cancel here, I want to show you something. This is one thing I found interesting. Um, also, I would never send my data to Amazon S3 with encryption false. Just saying. <laughs> um, but the that's why you can make your own rules. That's right. That's right. Uh, but the compression, uh, there are different rates of compression with this. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have essentially um, either a strong or a fast compression. So if you want to have more reduction, more data reduction, um, you can pick the strong one. So it would have more savings, but it will take a little bit longer. So you're not that worried. You can always pick the fast one. Nice. Very nice. Um, so All right, carry on. Yeah, so I think we'll keep it like this. And then select Next. And then select Finish. Um, so in this one, you can see that we have already created this previously, um, which is not an issue. 
we can just click cancel here and let's go to that job that we previously did. Um, so if you if you view this job, um, the block one, um, we can always go in and view the history for it. Um, so if we click the history here um, and click history, um, we, you can see that there's one instance for it. You can go in and review um, the info of what has been written to the cloud, um, how much data has been written to the cloud, um, and once it completes, we can always go back and review the full list of stuff, of data, uh, either snapshot or files from within the archives um, menu. So from here, I can go in here, select the Unity VSA one, um, and then we can see that, um, for example, the CG, you can see that it has been archived to the cloud. Um, so it, you can see that the the snapshots has been archived to the cloud. So from within here, if I go back to the dashboard, for example, um, you can monitor how many have been archived with the limit, for example, for snapshots of 32K, um, which is a limit that it wasn't previously set, um, but it's a good way to monitor the usage of the system. So one thing that you can monitor also is the compression. So if I have had compression in the, in the for the resource that we are archiving, you can monitor from this dashboard. For example, in this, for the CTA, the file tiering for the files, I had compression in 50%. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty great. So when you think about uh, all the capabilities here, I think, Josh, to your point, we're, we're happy with the UI, for one. To like you said, the deployment in a few minutes. To I mean, this demo took what another another six <laughs> to get operational, and and so maybe a few minutes in between. But you're like 15 minutes to tiering to the cloud, assuming you've got your S3 bucket set up or uh, you know Azure, Azure or whatever ECS. you're going to use. Yeah, whatever right. you use. Um, yeah, and and again, it, it's, it's free. You, you can't beat the pricing. Uh, you know with the caveat that you do have to pay for your cloud storage. They don't give you that for free. Yeah, sadly, uh, that's not free. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, but yeah. you know, this is some, some great technology. One thing I did want to point out, um, when you create a schedule for a NAS job, and, and Kenneth, maybe you can help me, you can actually, uh, you can actually test a, a NAS uh, file tiering? Yes. So for example, if you wanna, you're like, you have two terabytes, but you wanna archive 200 gigs. And you know that those 200 gigs are mainly PDFs, or they're mainly 10 gigs in size. Um, we can always go in here, go to the archive um, job, and then when we go in, figure out what the, what CTA we're gonna be using, sorry, what the Unity we're gonna be using, um, you can just pick the source, and then, um, for example, here I'll pick this um, this folder, and then once you pick your folder, there's a policy, right? Let's assume that we're going to be using this one. So I have created a couple, for example, archive PDFs, and or greater than 100 megabytes. So the naming. You can name it whatever. I try to <laughs> name it something that kind of helped me on the um, on the long run, right? On or you might have more than one admin, so you do want to be friendly in that sense, just as friendly as the GUI. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then in here, you can see that it's, you can either schedule it time based, or you can schedule it capacity based. Meaning, capacity is based on the usage. So if you had been using that file system for more and it's getting full, that's when you want to tier your data, move that data, convert it to a stub, so that way you free up the space so you can do that type of schedule or you can always simulate it. Um, so you want to see how much files would be archived. Um, I'll pick this one and then click next and then finish. Um, so the good thing is um, that at the end, you can kind of go in and, and, and compare uh, the criteria. So the business case always change. 
So if you start with one policy and you're like, well, now I need to archive this based on this attributes, you can always go to the policy page, look at the policy that you want to change, and instead of archive PDFs, you're like, mm, never mind. I think I want to actually focus on the award documents. Or instead of by file name size, I want to focus by when it was accessed. So you want to tier all your old data. So if you want to tier all your old data to a cloud, you can use that also as the attribute in order to Yeah, that one's filter. pretty nice to be able to go get uh, everything older than 90 days or, or something of that nature. Right. And, and the real benefit of something like that is, uh, you know, as your data ages and it's taking up capacity on your Unity XT, it's uh, it's actually slowing. It could be slowing down your other business operations that are also running on that storage array. So by utilizing the CTA to free up that space on the file side, on the block side, you're actually saving money uh, and hopefully helping uh, your on-prem applications uh, perform a little bit better. Always a nice bonus for sure. Absolutely. All right. Well, this has been uh, great. Kenneth, really appreciate you walking us through this process. Josh, appreciate your thoughts. We've got the detailed report on storageview.com. If you just search for uh, Dell EMC Cloud Tiering Appliance or CTA, you'll find that. And uh, we've got a wonderful uh, infographic too. So we'll have those linked in the YouTube uh, video description for you to check out as well. And uh, you know, thanks both you guys uh, for participating. Thank you. Thank you.